Okay guys, today we're going to talk about what makes a good x-ray. Uh, somebody had emailed us asking us if we could do a quick video on this topic, so here we go. Uh, with respect to the shoulder, we typically get four views. We get an AP, a true AP, which is called a Gracie view. You can see how you can see the uh, glenohumeral joint better here than you can on the uh, standard AP. We get a scapular Y, which is called a scapular Y because the scapula looks like a Y. Then we get an axillary view, and this is a good view for visualizing joint congruency. You can see the glenoid well here, the humeral head well here. So this tells you uh, that the joint is congruent and thus not dislocated. Uh, the elbow, elbow, although there are special views for this, typically it's a two view series. You have an AP and a lateral. On all views, the radius uh, should line up with the capitellum, which it does. On the AP view, really you should be able to see this radial capitellar joint space well. And on the lateral, you want to see the anterior humeral line intersect the uh, anterior one-third or middle one-third of the capitellum. Additionally, on the lateral, you should have a pretty good view of the ulna humeral joint. Uh, the forearm is typically a two-view series, an AP and a lateral. Uh, when we look at the AP, we want to see that the uh, radial styloid is 180 degrees from the biceps tuberosity or the radial tubercle. And on the lateral film, we want to see that the ulnar styloid is 180 degrees uh, from the coronoid. So this is a pretty good AP and lateral of the forearm. Uh, the wrist is typically a two or three view series. In the two view series, we get a PA and a lateral. The third view would be an oblique. Uh, on the PA, we want to see minimal overlap on the metacarpal bases. We should be able to visualize the carpal bones well and you really should have little to no overlap of the distal radial ulnar joint. Uh, on the lateral film, we're really looking primarily for alignment. We can see that the capitate, lunate, and the radius are all in line with one another here. So this is a pretty good uh, PA and lateral of the wrist. Uh, on the pelvis uh, x-ray series, we typically get an AP a pelvic inlet and a pelvic outlet view. On the AP, the spinous processes should be midline. The space from the uh, pubic symphysis to the bottom of the sacrum should be about two centimeters, and the obturator foramen should be symmetric, uh, which suggests that the pelvis is not rotated. On the pelvic inlet views, you should have S1 overlying S2, and this is a good view to assess internal and external rotation of the pelvis, as well as anterior and posterior translation of the SI joint. On the uh, pelvic outlet view, the pubic symphysis should relatively be about S2, uh, which it is here. Uh, this is a good view to assess for vertical shear injuries as well as flexion or extension of the pelvis. Uh, hip series typically includes an AP of the pelvis as, as well as a uh, AP and a lateral of the hip. Uh, the AP of the hip is pretty much a straight shot, just trying to see this uh, joint space there. And on the lateral, you, you would like to see the uh, femoral shaft, the femoral neck, and the femoral head relatively in line. Recall that the uh, lesser trochanter is a posterior structure. The knee, typically a two-view series of an AP and a lateral. On the AP of the knee, you want to see the joint space well. And the tibia should be bisected by the fibula, which you see there. So this is a good AP of the knee. On the lateral view, the medial and lateral femoral condyles should really look like one condyle. If you see two condyles, this suggests that the uh, femur is likely internally and externally rotated. Additionally, you should be able to see this uh, joint space relatively well. The ankle is typically a three view series of a lateral AP and a mortise. On the lateral view, you wanna see the tibial tailor joint well and you should see the fibula uh, intersecting the posterior one-third of the tibia, which you do there. On the AP, you should see about five or more uh, millimeters of overlap of the tib fib, uh, distal tib fib joint. And on the mortise, you should have only about a millimeter of overlap, but really there should be no super interposition of the medial or lateral malleoli. You should be able to see the tibial tailor joint well. And this is where we assess medial clear space here. This is the view we want to uh, use when we're doing our external rotation stress view of the ankle for our Weber B and C uh, distal fibula fractures. 
Recall that you get this view with approximately 15 degrees of internal rotation of the hip. Uh, you don't want to rotate through the foot as this is not going to give you a good mortise. And of the foot series is typically three views, a PA, an oblique, and a lateral. Uh, on the PA view, we want to see the medial aspect of the second metatarsal in line with the medial aspect of the me, uh, middle cuneiform. On the oblique, we want to see the medial aspect of the cuboid in line with the medial aspect of the fourth metatarsal. And on the lateral, we want to see the dorsal aspect of the metatarsals in line with the dorsal aspect of the tarsal bones. So this video is brought to you by Pocket Pimped. We hope you learned something. If you have an idea for a good video, feel free to email us at pocketpimped at gmail.com and uh, we'll be happy to make a video for you.